Uh, my name is Marvin Flores Aguilera. I'm the program administrator for the School of Health, and I oversee the safety programs for the School of Medicine and the School of Nursing. I was going to school for um, to get my PhD in chemistry, and uh, after six years, I decided it wasn't going to work out, so I left the PhD program. I've always just kind of been interested in being able to make things and uh, build things, and the idea of doing that with molecules was really intriguing to me. Being able to um, make life better or make different different materials is really, really interesting. Like just being able to use today's technology to build tomorrow's future. My dad was a really big influence on me. I remember uh, being interested in science through my elementary school. Well, I left when I was about three, but when I, the first time going back, I remember just kind of walking the streets with my mom. I was really nine years old. I see my grandma remembering the the wood oven that she used to cook beans in and just remember her like stoking the fire and just uh, there is this uh atol chuco um and it's like uh what it is is uh fermented corn and they put some uh, spice they serve it in a, in a coconut shell and i remember tasting it and, and remembering and reminding me of like just childhood and there's certain little smells especially like uh, there's a spice um they put on mangos. And uh, so in the Salvador, it's very common to have green mangos. So they're they're not sweet. They're kind of uh, sour and they're, they're not soft. They're, they have a big crunch to it. They're crunchy. And they put lemon on it, a little bit of salt. This but I came when I was young. Um, so I had to learn English. It's kind of one of those things where um, I remember going to ESL classes with my brother, you know, and um, learning Learning English was a struggle, but you know, I remember it still being, you know, all of my elementary school going to ESL classes. I, I tell folks that I was learning English at the same time I was learning grammar. There's one uh, family in particular, she's my godmother now, but um, she was the, the mom of my best friend, uh, you know, in, in first grade. She became best friends with my mom, and uh, that family helped us out a lot. And the reason I say that is because um, we grew up in the Mission District, and the Mission District of San Francisco was, was, at the time, was like a pretty rough neighborhood. And uh, uh, we grew up on 16th and Mission, and that place used to be called El Cuadrilado de la Muerte. But because of my, my godmother, we were able to use their address to get into a different school. So we didn't go to school in that neighborhood, uh, even though I was like a really bright student and I had like, I won like about seven scholarships to go. I, I lost them all my first year because uh, I wasn't at the same level as the kids that I went to UC Santa Cruz, and so I wasn't passing my classes. Every time I, I thought about quitting or just things were really difficult, I would remember that, you know, that that's what was waiting for me. And I was like, nah, it's not going to be me. I got a note uh, that I needed to go see a lady named Maria Mata. And Maria Mata was uh, one of the counselors, and she said, hey, Marvin, you've been on academic probation, you've been on academic warning. And then we're, we're going to have to give you give your spot to somebody who's actually going to want to be here. You know, I, it's like I've been trying. I, I, I didn't party. I just all I did was study. There's a lady who really believed in me. Her name is Nancy Knapelski. She ran the ACE Academic Honors Program at UC Santa Cruz. She helped me to believe in myself. I know a buddy of mine. Uh, when we went to high school together. His name is Galbert Rodriguez. And he, he got me an opportunity to work for the Hispanic engineers and scientists that summer after my sophomore year. You know, it, it, it just, I just kind of figured out how to study. Like, you know, you have to learn how to study and what works for every person. One person doesn't work for the other. That summer when I was working at, U, at UC Berkeley, the director of the program, he was a PhD student. He was the sixth year in mathematics. I was talking to him about the program and about everything. And I just said, thank you for the opportunity. And he said, I remember he said that, you know, that there's, an, he, he put everybody on stage and he said, there's not a difference between the people that you have on the stage were the instructors and the people, the kids that were part of the program. Like sometimes like when you go to a class, you're like, oh, this kid's smart. Like it's not that he's smart. A lot of times the parents, the parents have paid tutors, you know, and to, to make it so that this is like the third time, fourth time seeing the same material. I was able to, to find a good, the ACE honors program. What they did is that they would take um, a small group of kids and they were all Latinos or, or, or blacks or Asians and they would, get them together and they would find study buddies. And so what it is is that you make community within the classroom. Um, I remember one time 
uh, in biology class, um, I asked people to study with me and not one person wanted to study with me. And one guy was like, he saw me, he's like, I'll be in your group, you seem cool. And so it was this white dude and he would like, we would get together and we would study together. When I got the highest grade in the class, it was like maybe like 250 students, me and my study buddy. For him, like they didn't assume that he, like he was, that he was, he, they just assumed he was smart. For me, <laughs> I, I remember the next time I took a test, right? I had, I had the TA was looking directly at me and he didn't leave me because he thought that I was cheating. And not only that, but it's funny that after everybody found out that I got the highest grade in the class, everybody wanted to study with me. And I had to tell people, no, I don't want to study with anybody except my buddy here, Josh. <laughs> but, the, but Josh had never got uh, another TA looking at him directly. I think my mom is the one that really believed in me the most. But she, it was kind of a weird, funny thing. Uh, she would tell me, she's like, I already told all my friends that you're going to school, so don't make me look bad. <laughs> No pressure, but it's just it's like don't make me look bad. I already I already told them. <laughs> so you know that that was in my mind. But she's like, she told me it's like one time when I told her I was gonna quit. She said, Marvin, nobody told you to go to school. I didn't tell you. I just said be a good person. No one expects you to be nothing other than a good person. You don't have to go to school to be a a, a good person. You can go and work and you can live your life. But I don't want you to be a quitter. <laughs> and like, and it's like, no one had told you to jump on the on the on the horse. Now, you know, you gotta figure out how to stay on it. In the hijo. In the I have worked for the Division of Agriculture and Natural Resources. I was a safety manager for a research facility in a small town called Parlair. And I worked there for five years. And uh when this opportunity opened up, I applied. A good portion of the folks that work at UC Davis Health, whether they're PhD students or they're postdocs, or, um, are from foreign countries, and so they're immigrant students to the United States. Your ability to speak English has nothing to do with your with your intelligence. And you know, I meet folks, and they're like, they're trying to say something to me, and I'm like, don't worry about it. I mean, like, I'm, I'm an immigrant too. You no, know, anybody that comes around across my my um, my path. Uh, I tell them about everything, all the opportunities that are available to them.